All gang members have a dark past, but there are some out there who are the worst of the worst, and Morris Boucher was one such man. One of the most notorious Canadian bikers was a Quebecer by the name of Morris Boucher, who caused widespread destruction in his wake. The June 21, 1943 birth of Morris did not foreshadow the pivotal role he would play in the Montreal Motorcycle War. Morris and his seven siblings lived in a poor household as he was growing up. He dropped out of school in ninth grade and went into the family business, joining his father in the building trade. Morris quickly realized, however, that he was not suited for strenuous labor. Instead, he experimented with marijuana and then moved on to the stronger narcotics as his dependency on them grew. He became increasingly involved in criminal activity and eventually turned to thievery to support his habit. First apprehended in 1974, Morris spent the better part of a year in court before being sentenced to 40 months behind bars. His incarceration coincided with a significant change in the Quebec biker subculture. The question remains whether or not Morris used his time behind bars to think about his choices and make any adjustments before being released. Maybe he even made some nefarious inroads into the criminal underworld that will help him after he gets out. We will talk more about that in a while. At this time, the Hells Angels were an influential biker club with a reputation for aggressive growth and violent conflicts. They had already taken over New York City, and now their renowned leader, Yves Trudeau, had set his sights on Canada. The gang rapidly ascended to the top of the Canadian drug trade and established a secure foothold in the criminal underbelly. Although Morris was a member of the SS, a right-wing motorcycle club, he was so feared that not even his fellow SS members of the police dared cross him. In 1984, he was imprisoned for sexual assault and served 40 months in prison. During this time, Morris decided to transfer teams and join the Hells Angels since he believed they would be more successful in the drug trade. But Destiny had other plans for the Hells Angels, and a rival gang known as the Rock Machine Nomads emerged as a new danger. Power in the drug trade had shifted due to the Nomads' declaration of war against the Hells Angels. Morris had cycled with the biker who would later create the Rock Machine Nomads, so he knew the group was formidable. Despite the additional danger, Morris was not a coward. The Hells Angels, in his mind, needed a hero, and he was prepared to fill that role. After he brutally murdered a rival motorcyclist, he became a hero among his gang members. His violent deeds earned him the esteem of his fellow Hells Angels. After being struck down by betrayal and power struggles, the gang's leader fled on a warrant, leaving behind a leadership void adding salt to the wound. Yves Trudeau, one of the country's most powerful and feared rockers, turned state witness, leaving the once mighty Hells Angels vulnerable and desperate. However, amid the chaos, Morris emerged as a true warrior, ready to fight and claw his way to the top. Morris, a ruthless and merciless biker who had already made a name for himself among bikers and police during his SS days, ascended to the throne of the Hells Angels in 1987. Five Hells Angels were killed in what became known as the Lennoxville Massacre due to the infighting within the organization. Boucher filled the void in the gang's leadership and began to reorganize the group. He was determined to strengthen his gang by any means necessary. Morris began by bringing small rocker clubs under the Hells Angels banner. Those who refused the offer soon found themselves facing the full force of Morris's iron will, either forced to submit or crushed underfoot. In 1989, when a club called the Outlaws dared to oppose the Hells Angels, Morris showed them no mercy. He gave the order to attack the Outlaws clubhouse with explosives, and the Outlaws surrendered and were absorbed into the Hells Angels. Those who refused to bow down were swiftly dealt with. However, Morris's thirst for power and dominance was not yet quenched. He formed a new club called the Rockers, a group solely devoted to carrying out the dirty work necessary to ensure Hell's Angels' supremacy. Those who proved their worth in the Rockers were given the honor of becoming full-fledged Hell's Angels members, while the rest were cast aside. He also split off a faction of Hell's Angels he dubbed Nomads. To join the Nomads, would-be members were required to commit a murder. This was done so that undercover law enforcement personnel wouldn't be able to penetrate the organization. But the peace he established wouldn't last for long. The Quebec Biker War was about to begin. On July 13, 1994, 34-year-old Pierre Doust was fixing up his Harley at his shop. Doust took 16 bullets from three assailants who approached him. Doust was a member of the Hells Angels, and members of the Rock Machine were responsible for his death. The Rock Machine, led by Frederick Foucher, was making a statement to Morris Boucher, who had ordered all traffickers to purchase their drugs from the Hells Angels. 
The killing of Doust sparked a full-scale conflict in Quebec between rival biker gangs. When the Rock Machine and other gangs decided to stand up to Boucher and his autocratic ways, it sparked a struggle that would last until 2001 and claim the lives of over 160 individuals. Possibly, only the bikers' loved ones shed tears over their loss. However, several civilians were killed unintentionally. When a 11-year-old Daniel Disrochers was murdered by bomb fragments, public outcry reached a fever pitch. Although dynamite was used on both sides, the Hell's Angels were more equipped to deal with the Rock Machine's alliance. Once, a truck full of dynamite was parked outside of Boucher's favorite eatery. A parking enforcement officer noticed the illegally parked truck and hauled it away before Boucher could remotely explode it. Boucher and scores of other diners almost escaped death. Boucher was working on destabilizing the court system in Quebec. At the same time, he was fighting the rock machine. He had prison guards Diane Levine and Pierre Rondeau killed at his behest. They were unwitting victims whose murders were meant to frighten away any potential witnesses against the group. In 1999, with its ranks depleted by assassinations, the Rock Machine's alliance turned to the Banditos for help. Boucher's interest in bee stalks arose out of the blue when he learned that a large American biker gang like the Banditos was moving in. A truce was declared, but it didn't hold and ultimately wasn't at all that significant. The cops were prepared to take action. Initial attempts to dismantle the biker gangs failed because of the infamously corrupt nature of the justice system in Quebec. A special task force comprised of officers from the RCMP, the OPP, and the Surette de Quebec was established. A few snitches agreed to give up information in exchange for reduced sentences if the bikers were caught. On March 28, 2001, the police conducted a huge raid. The 139 Hells Angels and their associates were apprehended with the help of 2,000 police officers. One of the people apprehended was named Mars Boucher. Nine bikers were found guilty of murder plot, gangsterisms, and drug trafficking after a lengthy trial. However, the Hells Angels' illicit activities recovered quite quickly after the raid and subsequent imprisonments. The narcotics trade resumed as usual and new members joined the fray. Boucher was sentenced to life in prison without the chance of parole for 25 years after being found guilty of conspiracy to murder in the deaths of two prison guards. Boucher's violent lifestyle persisted even behind bars. He ordered the murder of his criminal rivals by communicating with his daughter during jail visits. He was a victim of this as well. The American leaders of the Hells Angels were reportedly furious with Boucher for bringing unwanted attention to the club. Someone took a hit out on him while he was incarcerated. The Indian Bossy, an aboriginal street gang, wanted him dead after they and the Zigzag Crew, a Hells Angel puppet gang, got into a fight. In a knife incident that took place in October 2010, a member of the Indian Bossy injured Boucher on the orders of their commander, Danny Wolf. After five years in prison, Boucher and another guy were accused of plotting the murder of another inmate. Boucher was told he had cancer in 2015. In July of 2022, he died, not at the hands of criminal adversaries, but from sickness. He was 69. That's all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video, and do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on your way out. See you all next time.